We're here today at the current military museum in County Kildare to find out this, the story of the recently restored 18-pounder. The 18-pounder was an iconic artillery piece used by British Armed Forces during the First World War. It was also used to fire shots during the 1916 East Rebellion in Dublin and it fired the opening shots of the Irish Civil War by the Irish National Army. It went on to be used by the Artillery Corps of the Irish Defence Forces until the 1970s. Good morning, welcome to the Corps Museum. My name is Sergeant Robert Delaney. I'm a member of the Ordnance Corps in the Defence Forces and I'd like to talk to you today about the 18-pounder field gun. Um, the 18-pounder field gun that you see here is Mark II uh, field gun. The gun itself um, was designed in the wake of the Boer War, uh, when the British realised that their old 15-pounders were no match for some of the guns that the Boers were using in South Africa. The 18-pounder was introduced in British service in 1904 and, of course, gained iconic status in the Great War, where it was the, one of the heaviest field guns operated by any side. Uh, really, it was one of the greatest field guns of the age. The Irish had 17 Mark I and II um, 18-pounder field guns. The first nine um, came in, in the, during the Civil War, and they were all sold off in 1959. Um, the Free State Army received nine of these guns from the British during the um, Civil War. The first two were taken on loan from the 17th Battery Royal Field Artillery then based in Marlborough Barracks um, in the Phoenix Park, which is now McKee Barracks. Um, those two guns were used during the initial bombardment of the four courts. The next day, two more were taken on. The four, those four guns were all Mark IIs. This is one of those guns, uh, serial number 9168. You can, um, and then over the days that followed, five more Mark Ones were taken on. And all nine guns saw action throughout the country during the Civil War. They were used in the four courts, uh, during the Battle of the Four Courts initially. Um, they fired on the block, uh, one gun fired on the block on O'Connell Street. They, uh, there was one used, one of the Four Courts guns was used again up on, uh, taking on anti treaty troops based in the Millmount Fort in Drogheda. Um, when the 18 pounder wasn't used as to, to bombard an area before Free State troops went in, it was used as an accompanying gun. In this role, it essentially was a heavy support weapon to be used by the Free State commander as required. And um, General Prout, during his advance from uh, Waterford to Clonmel, brought his 18-pounder up to take on uh, anti-treaty when they were ambushed from their flanks. The same thing, uh, the guns were used in Cork during the advance on Cork City, um, during the battles, uh, during the fighting around Douglas and Rochestown. And again, this type of use of the 18 pounder was seen in, during the fighting in Limerick, um, advancing through Adair, Ratkeel, and Newcastle West. The 18 pounder field gun generally had a crew of 10 in British service. Um, it had a range of around 6,000 yards and could fire at a rate of fire up to around 20 rounds a minute. But generally, to keep the gun in good order during firing, it would have been around four rounds a minute um, that were, was, was generally fired. Um, just to point out some of the, the detail on the gun, you can see it has timber spoked wheels, um, a shield here to protect the gunners from shrapnel, um, when the 18-pounder was introduced initially, it was introduced as a shrapnel gun. Um, it only fired shrapnel, it wasn't until the middle of the Great War that the high explosive round was introduced. You can see the barrel of the gun here, and these two wing-like pieces sticking out, they're the gun rails. Um, above the barrel, mounted on top, is the uh, recoil system. In that recoil system, you've got two parts, a buffer and a recuperator. This particular one here really is what makes the Mark II 18-pounder iconic, this torpedo-shaped uh, bronze piece on the front of the recoil system. The earlier 
version of the 18 pound of the Mark I um, had springs and oil in the buffer and recuperator. This version, the Mark II, had an oil-operated buffer and an air-operated uh, recuperator, which, which really was quite advanced at the time. Um, this particular 18-pounder was discovered in the United States um, a few years ago by uh, Ken Smith Christmas, military historian over there. He recognised it by the FF stamp on the breech ring. Um, it was in very poor condition when it was discovered for almost half a century, it had been lying outside a diner where it had been initially on display and it was nicknamed the Ivy Patch Gun almost immediately because the Ivy from, had, had grown up around it. When it came into ordnance based workshops, our first job really was involved cleaning and assessing what needed to be done. We worked with experts from the National Museum and conservators um, in the best approach of how to, to take on this, this project. And the project itself has, has really been as much about preserving the piece, preserving the artefact, as it has been about uh, restoring it to this state. Um, the project to restore the field gun involved a huge team in Ordnance Based Workshops. The workshops itself um, is very lucky to have a, a broad number of trades and craftsmen working there, um, and, and all of them were involved in the restoration of this, this gun. Um, part of the, 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 the preservation aspect on the gun can be seen with the timber lats down the front of the shield. The original timber lats had rotted off, and very little of them survived when the gun came into us, but the rivets survived, and it was decided that as the rivets were 100 years old, and part of the original piece, the new timber work uh, was put together by one of the carpenters in OBW, in Ordnance Space Workshops, and fitted and moulded around the original rivets, which made it uh, an extra difficult job. On the rear of the field gun here, you can see the sighting system of the 18-pounder. Um, mounted above the barrel is the rear of the recoil system. The rear of the barrel, you have the breech ring, very heavy piece, of chunk of metal there. Um, you also have the, the two hand wheels here, you can see are for operating the um, elevation and traverse of the gun. To load the weapon, it still works on this one, the breech block is opened um, and the round is loaded as one piece, the case and the round together. Once the breech block is closed, the firer who would sit on this seat here operates the gun using lever down there. The upper and lower shields um, were removed from the guns when they were mechanized in the 1939. Um, the mechanization uh, of the 18 pounder meant that a new set of road wheels with pneumatic tired tires were fitted onto it. And this, because the gun was towed by uh, a mechanical vehicle rather than uh, by horse, which it had been up to that point, the shields were rattling too much, so the artillery corps wanted to take them off. It meant during the restoration project that we had to manufacture new um, plates for the upper and lower shields. You can see them there. The, um, there was no sign that this gun had been decommissioned other than a weld on the breech block, which held the breech block in place in behind the breech ring. Once that was removed though, the corrosion inside in the chamber made it very difficult to get the breech block open. And you can see the 18 pounder here is mounted on cobblestones, um, copying the way it was dug in on the keys across from the four courts in 1922. Um, this weapon now is on display in the Curra Museum um, and it's well worth a visit.